What's up everyone? Thank you for joining me for another episode here at Blended Graphics. I'm Jason Ortega and today's video is dedicated to using opposite colors on the color wheel. And more specifically, we're going to talk about how we can use these colors as part of our editing process. So let's have a look. Alright, so with our fresh canvas loaded up here, the first thing we want to do is turn on our base image and we're going to use this model as our main subject for all of our editing process today. So really what the main goal of this video is, I just want to show you a way of how you can use opposite colors on a color wheel as part of your decision making process when it comes to color grading, especially sometimes if you're stuck and you're not sure on what direction you want to take with an image. All right, so with that said, the first thing I want to do is load up a color wheel and we're going to use an RGB color wheel for this tutorial. And for the sake of time, we're not going to dive heavily into talking about color theory. We're mainly just going to stick to those focal points that's going to assist us with this video today. And for those of you that are new to color theory, when I talk about opposite colors, it really is what it sounds like. We're going to use pairs of colors that are at opposite ends of the color wheel. And for this video here, we're going to stick to primarily the RGB and CMY colors for the editing process. So with this visual in front of you, you can see that the opposite of red is cyan, opposite of green is magenta, and opposite of blue is yellow. And for today's tutorial, I'm mainly going to walk you through of how we can use the cyan and red colors for our color grading process, but I'll also show you what it looks like for those other pairs. All right, so to kick things off here, the first thing I want to do is make a copy. So go ahead and press Ctrl or Command J. And again, I just always like to have a backup just in case. And with that top layer, we want to make sure it's a smart object and then we want to go up to the top to filter down the camera raw filter and we're going to do some minor tweaks in here just to get things kicked off. All right. And the first things that I want to do is go ahead and turn up the exposure and contrast just a little bit. Again, we're just doing minor adjustments at this point. And once we have that, let's go ahead and go all the way down to our whites and we can turn that up a bit. All right. This is looking nice. And then let's scroll down to the vibrance and saturation. And then again, we can just kind of turn these anchors up a little bit too. So now that I basically got the levels where I want them to be, let's go ahead and start playing around with the color grading. And we want to go down to this color grading tab right here. And what I have envisioned in my head is I want my brighter points to be more the cyan colors and the darker points to be reds. So starting with the midtones here, we can kind of shift that more to the cyan. And then we can do the same thing with the highlights. And once I have that in place, let's go to the shadows and turn those to the opposite end and make those red. All right, this is looking really good. And again, this is just going to be a nice foundation for us to build upon. So once we have this set, let's go ahead and hit OK. And the first thing that I want to tackle here is that all of the magenta tones that we have in this image, I want those to be more red. So we're going to add a selective color adjustment layer and then alter option click um, to make that clip to the image below. And then we're going to go to our magenta channel. So the opposite of cyan is red. So we're going to go to the cyan anchor and turn that all the way to the left. And then after that, we're going to go to the magenta anchor and do the same thing. We're going to make that all the way to the left too. And then by those two adjustments, that's going to shift those colors to be a bit more red instead of the magenta tone. And then let's go ahead and collapse this panel. And then let's check out the before and after. So it's very, very subtle adjustments, but we're on the right path so far. What I want to do now is I want there to be more contrast between our subject and the background. So what we're going to do here is add a color balance adjustment layer. Same thing, we're going to clip it to those layers below. And I want the background to be more cyan. So we're going to play around with the highlights in the midtones here. And we're just going to shift that cyan slider to the left. So we'll do it with the highlights now. And once we have this set, we can close that panel and then either Control or Command I to invert that mask. And then we can just kind of uh, come up here to the flow and opacity, get that set to, you know, whatever you want to work with here. Nothing too much. And then just using a soft round brush, we're just going to paint some of that back in on that layer mask. We're going to paint white so that way we can bring back some of this cyan color. And like I said, this is going to introduce a bit more contrast here. All right, so I'm just going to take a few seconds here and make sure that I am completely filling in all of the little spaces of that background to make sure that that has that nice cyan color that we're looking for. And then I'll be back with you here in just a moment. All 
All right, this is looking really good. And as you can see, I even touched up those flowers a little bit as well so that they can have a bit of a tint of cyan too. I think what I want to do now is go back to our camera raw filter and we're going to go back to the midtones and highlights here. And I want to just introduce a bit more saturation with that cyan. So let's adjust the highlights and then we can go to the midtones here and do the same. All right, and then let's hit OK. All right, so one of the final things that we're going to do here is we're going to add some more red. So clicking this top layer, let's add a new layer on top and clip it below. And what I want to do here is essentially, if we look at the lipstick here, I want that to be more red. I want the makeup to be a bit more red and then just introduce a bit more red to the skin in general. So let's go to the colors and we're going to go to the very top and top right corner and hit OK. And then we're going to put this into an overlay blend mode. And once we have that set, let's go ahead and turn down our opacity quite a bit. And we're going to zoom in here on the face and let's just get started with the lips. So like I said, we're just going to use this color to, again, make the makeup more red, but again, bring some of the redness into her face and not look so ghostly. So we're starting out with the lips. And this way too, it's just going to make that color just pop a bit more and stand out. So this is looking really good. It is a little bit heavy, so we can even turn down the opacity on this just a little bit. All right, so that's looking really nice. And then we can come up here by the eyes. We don't want to do it too much. I don't want it to be a very bad makeup, you know? So we're just doing very subtle adjustments here. And we can do the right eye as well. And once we finish with this eye, let's go ahead and travel down to the cheek. And we can turn down the opacity a bit. And let's just touch up some of these areas here. Okay, and then we can work on the nose. So essentially what we're doing here is basically all of the shadows and the contour, we want that to be a bit more red and not such a dull color. So we just want to bring some life into the skin a bit. And then let's travel down to the neck and let's do the same thing here. All right, so I think this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. And maybe we'll touch this neck up just a little bit more. But essentially this is looking really good. Let's see the before and after. All right, so I like it. And then let's go ahead and touch up uh, some of the hair. So let's start with the eyebrows first. Nothing too strong. I just kind of want the darker portions of the hair to be a bit more red and tint here. So we're doing the hair on top of her head now and working along the shadows and the darker strands of hair. Okay, and now that we have that pretty much set, let's go up to the flowers here. And even these flowers, I know we try to turn them a bit red uh, before with the selective color. We're just gonna reinforce that, make that a bit more saturated with this red, this go around. All right, this is looking really good. Let's come down here and let's add a vibrant adjustment layer on top. And I just want the colors maybe to pop just a little bit more. So let's increase the vibrance. So somewhere right around here. All right, great. So this is by no means perfect. Um, obviously, just for sake of time and for this tutorial, I just quickly went over everything, but this at least gives you a general idea of kind of what to do and the steps to take to make this happen. Um, if I had a bit more time on my hands, I'd be a bit more precise and making sure it looks really nice and clean. But let's go ahead and group these together. Let's click that top layer, hold down the shift key, and then click the bottom layer, and then Control or Command G so we can group these together. And then you can just give it a title if you want. But essentially here, I just want to show you the before and after of what we started out with the base image. So let's turn this off. So that's our before. And this is after. So a lot of change happened here. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that base image. This is just to give you some sort of idea if you want to start playing around with colors and give it a bit of a variety than what you originally had. All right, so we can even turn this off again and then turn it back on. And as I told you at the beginning here, I'm going to show you what the other color combinations look like too. So let's do the green and magenta and to see what that looks like. 
And then even the blue and yellow color combination. Let's take a look at that one as well. So again, these are all just different ideas. Um, I actually really like the cyan and red, my favorite between the three, but it just gives you some sort of options and ideas if you're kind of stuck on that color grading process and need some sort of direction. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial and dropping by today. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to smash that like button and click that subscribe button if you're not doing so already. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a comment below, especially if you like these kinds of videos and want to see more like this in the future. Hope to have you all back again for our next video here at Blended Graphics. In the meantime, please take care and be safe, and I'll see you soon.